Why do the heathen rage and imagine a vain thing? I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Arachach, Wadash. Double honor to the elder apostles and bishops, the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole four elect tabernacle of David around the world that are out there preaching his gospel, prophesying the downfall of this wicked kingdom, and bringing out the message of salvation to the elect of the nation of Israel. And um, I'm sure most of you are aware of um, a meeting that took place back on the 18th, where you had the UN gathered together to discuss a future plan for the, the world. And it had everything to do with what they call sustainable developmental goals, which we all know is the Agenda 2030. And it's interesting enough that they did it um, this month, you know, in 2023, and they want to have the goal achieved by 2030. So that means that they have seven years to roll out this plan and execute it. So there's going to be a lot of uh, systematic changes, um, a lot of transitions in which, you know, we're seeing unfold before our very eyes. A lot of new systems that they're introducing and uh, proposing. And uh, pretty much the human population, they just got to accept it. They just got to lay down and, and basically accept it. So this is what's going on. And um, what I have up is from the UN uh, site, all right, which uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description box. All right, the United Nations uh, website. And this is from uh, the Secretary General. And these are some of the remarks that he made during this particular um, UN meeting. So it says, distinguished ministers, I welcome your agreement that the summit of the future will adopt an intergovernmentally negotiated pact for the future, reaffirming the United Nations Charter, reinvigorating multilateralism, boosting implementation of existing commitments and agreeing on solutions to new challenges. And then he lays out, you know, the very um, commitments that they want to achieve by the year 2030. It says, I also welcome your decision to work towards a pact covering five baskets of issues, sustainable development and financing for development and it sounds good you know the way they um you know use these terms you know sustainable development so it's like they're trying to act like they're trying to save the world right but we all know how this devil operates they're very nefarious or right? they have a very evil wicked plan that they want to uh, accomplish. All right, let's say should get an advantage, but we're not ignorant of his devices. All right. It says in uh, Sirach 14, if they uh, do it good, they do it unwillingly. But at the end, they would declare their wickedness. So none of it is to be trusted, of course. We know that this um, it has an evil purpose to it. And um, ultimately, the Lord says this. This is uh, Psalms 33 and verse 10. And it says, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. And this is why. In Psalms, the second chapter, which I quoted, it says, why do the heathen 
rage and why do they imagine a vain thing as if they can just bypass or go around the will of the heavenly father and, and basically perform on their own will they're not doing anything on their own will the heavenly father ultimately is in control so these nations they're getting proud and beside themselves all right so sustainable development and financial development we already know what this is going into all right they want to uh, make the whole entire world a cashless world all right everybody have their own basket of currencies but it's going to be digital international peace and security so they believe that they will have what it take to establish peace and safety around the world now what do the scriptures say about that let's go to first thessalonians 5 and the uh, point is at verse 3 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1, it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So the Lord, you already know, the Lord is going to show up, you know, when everybody least expect it. You know, like a, like a break-in. You know, you didn't see it coming, you didn't anticipate it. That's how the Lord is going to show up. And these nations, they're going to think that they're going to, you know, get their uh, ball rolling and they're going to be able to ride off into the sunset, you know, in power, you know, uh, with the population reduced, them controlling, you know, every facet of, of life, controlling all the resources, you know, this whole agenda that they want to uh achieve they really think that they're gonna just be completely successful the lord's gonna just pop up on them all right right when right when his devil try to fill his belly right when he when he thinks that everything is all good and secured for himself the lord's gonna pull up on him it says, for when they shall say peace and safety, and this is what the Secretary General said at this uh, recent um, summit, this UN uh, Sustainable Developmental Goal Summit, all right, international peace and security or safety, right? So when they when they shall say peace and safety, let's look up that word safety. Let's see what this uh, says. This is the Greek word. Strong's G803, asphalia. Asphalia. And it says, let me scroll down. Firmness, stability, certainty, undoubted truth, security from enemies and dangers, safety. So this is what they're this is what they're saying. Now, meanwhile, you know, while they want peace and safety around the world, you got um, a lot of uh, nuclear posturing going on between Russia, China, and the U.S. A lot of activity going on, you know, at these uh, nuclear sites. You know, what are, what are they uh, preparing for? Why are they uh, getting involved in these uh, nuclear tests? And then you got here in the States, they bringing in uh, thousands of uh, uh, migrants, immigrants into the country. while the, the 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 economy is uh continuously depleting 30 over 33 trillion in debt 
rising inflation, rising interest rates. More uh, poverty, more homelessness. Evictions. So there's going to be more chaos. There ain't going to be no peace and security anytime soon. Your borders are, are freaking open. You're letting people in. How So how is that security? So, yeah. And then you're divided as well in, in the country. So let me finish reading it. It says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. And, uh, you know, what's going to come upon them, you know, as a, as a, as a, a, tra a travail, you know, of a woman. Those these plagues, the Lord's gonna increase the plagues on on the world. Let's go to our second Ezra sixteen real quick. They talking about peace and safety, but this is what we're coming into. Second Ezra sixteen, and uh. Starting at 17, it says, Woe is me, woe is me, who would deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars. All right, and, uh, you know, we're coming into that time, the beginning of uh, the birth pains. All right, people dying left and right. Uh, people dying of uh, famine, starvation. And, you know, the people that are in these impoverished areas that are starving, they're pushing them into, you know, populated areas away from the rural areas. And those people are going to come into these populated areas where there's a little food. And that's why people are going to be <laughs> fighting, you know, over these limited uh, sources of food and resources. These devils know all along what they're trying to do. And then you got great death because a lot of people are going to die of, of hunger. They're going to die of um, these uh, diseases that are spreading uh, forth. These natural disasters like you just had the earthquake and those um, floods in Libya, you know, killing thousands of uh, people. You know, that, that ain't nothing. It's going to turn up even more. It says the beginning of wars. All right. China got Taiwan surrounded. Um, Russia, you know, shot down some uh, uh, Ukrainian jets. You know, basically they're 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 literally in a war, but they're not really talking too much about it. Like the the, the war is uh, escalating. Okay. It says, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. Talking about the people. You know, they're not going to consider their ways and why, you know, these evil things are, are, are coming upon them. All right. And, you know, they're, they're back at that uh, state. During it, like during the time of uh, Noah, when you know their minds were continually set on uh, evil, you know they were very uh, corrupted. They were morally uh, uh, putrid. You know they were violent, and these people are not going to stop. All right, the Lord had mingled that perverse spirit amongst them. It says, "Nor." Be always mindful of the scourges. You know, you just had that um that 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 flood over here in uh, Nevada where they was about to have that 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 sick twisted uh, uh revelry festival. You know, and, and those people ended up getting caught and 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 slowed down in that mud. People couldn't get in and get out. You know, and, and the Lord pretty much stopped that whole. Uh, festival from, from going on 
But these people are not going to be mindful of their wickedness. It says, uh, behold, vittles shall be so good, cheap upon earth. Like the 50 cent <laughs> burgers at, at, at Mickey D's. These people don't have no idea what they're putting in their bodies. They just figure it's so cheap. And you already know it, it, it's something uh, nefarious about that uh, as well. Could be that 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 stuff that they trying to inject in, they've been trying to inject into you. They probably put it in that meat so you could get it into your body. Our people are stupid, you know, and, and, and they have no awareness of what the scriptures say to, to uh, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And our people, they're just stupid like that. You know, they're, they're sheep led to uh, the slaughter. So it says that they shall think themselves to be in good case. You know, like, oh, this is, hey, 50 cent burgers? Oh, man. We finna eat. Everything is all good. And even then shall evils grow upon earth. Sword, famine, and great confusion. Now let me uh, jump down to verse 37. It says, Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son. With two or three hours of her birth, great pains can pass her womb, which pains, when a child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. You know, so all these evils, all these uh, plagues and different things that are uh, coming on the world, it's not going to really um, slow down. All right, the Lord is not going to hold back. And these people are going to constantly feel the effects of these uh, sorrows, these birth pains. All right, it's going to bring more agitation, more anguish. Because the world right now, they just don't have any respect or fear for, for the Heavenly Father. So he's going to turn the heat up on, on, this, on this, this planet. It says, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. So while they're yelling peace and safety, this is what, what's really going to come upon the earth. Things are going to get worse and worse, man. Okay? And, is, and, and everything's not going to go according to plan as far as these uh, proud leaders and, and rulers. Which they all are pretty much coming up under the uh, the, the, the leadership of uh, the Rothschilds, the Rockefeller, basically the, the international bankers. The globalist elite. So, going back, he said international peace and security, science, technology, and innovation, and digital cooperation. So, we already know what this is going into. They want more surveillance, you know, more biometrics, um, the infusing of uh, biology and technology, all right, basically transhumanism, the fourth industrial revolution. And that involves the MOTV system. And this is why they're transitioning from fiat currency, paper money, to digital currencies. CBDCs, if you will, central bank digital currencies. That's what this is going into. And then it says youth and future generations transforming global governance yeah, into a one world uh, uh digital slave control system all right so this is what they this is what they're planning this is what they want and they got seven years <laughs> from 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 this moment to 2030 and that's why it says in the, in the next sentence it says i command your pledge to advance human rights which this ain't advancing human rights this is further enslaving them 
you're saying that you want to be in control. All right. But this is all the imagination of, of, of the heathen. All right. Going back to Psalms uh, 2. Why do they rage and why do they imagine a vain thing? Psalms 2 verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? You know, because they acting like as if they're operating on their own will. Like I said, the, the counsel of the heathen, the Lord brings that to naught and, and establishes his own counsel. Okay. And when you read this, let me let me go to the NIV actually and read this. This is all part of the conspiracy. Which they they said was a, a theory, but you see that it ain't a theory. This is all for real. This agenda is very real. Psalms two and one it says, "Why do the nations conspire, and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up, and rulers band together against the Lord." These you the United Nations, uh, this whole group, United Nations. All right, and you also go to Psalms the eighty third chapter. It tells you about the conspiracy of the nations. And they're primarily set against the nation of Israel, which they know who the real children of Israel. The ones that are represented in the UN is not the real Israel. Those are that's Amalek. Let's go to Psalms 83. Psalms 83 and one it says, Keep keep not thou silence. O power, hold not thy peace and be not still, O power. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Let's go uh, to the NLT, see what it say. Psalms 83. And two, it says, don't you hear the uproar of your enemies? You know, these the, these uh, United Nations, you know, because all the uh, heathen is are enemies of the Lord. They're enemies of uh, Israel, the true Israel. Don't you see that your arrogant enemies are rising up? Yeah, they're the ones that's talking about they're going to control the future. No, the Lord is in control, man. And, uh, and we can't forget the scriptures say that the Lord uh, appoints the bounds that they cannot pass, you know? So they're getting, these nations are getting beside themselves, man. They're getting very proud, okay? The Lord uh, puts down and, and sets up another. The Lord ruleth in a kingdom of men and set up over it whom he will. It says they devise crafty schemes against your people. Talking about us, Israel. They conspire against your precious ones. Come, they say, and let us wipe out Israel as a nation. I mean, have they not spent all this time, you know, since we've been in captivity to wipe us out? All type of experimentations. All right, they they beat our heritage out of us. They They traded and sold us and Put us in a slavery, fed us with plantation Christianity, made us pagans, told us we was uh, Hamites and Africans and learned them, them, them Africana studies, put us in the ghettos of society and, 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 and you know, kept us under uh, impoverished conditions. Unclean food, defiled bread. They they loaded us with all type of uh, inoculations. You know, women had access to a. Uh, you know, uh, baby formula, GMO, a uh, 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 baby formula. You know, Infamil and Similac. So our brains wouldn't uh, develop uh, naturally. You know, alcohol, drugs, the, the crack cocaine epidemic. 
the, the, the Tuskegee experiment, street gangs, you name it, man. All these devices to wipe us out. And the latest thing is that that the, the, the jibby jabby. They have these councils and then they bring these devices out. It says we will destroy the very memory of its existence. Yes, this was their unanimous decision. They signed a treaty as allies against you. All these nations are against you, you Israelites. But you got dumb Israelites that's that that, you know, they still have that that slave mentality. You know, they're homeborn slaves. They still try to save the enemy. It says these Edomites, the very first ones on the list, and Ishmaelites, the, the, the so-called Arabs, they're represented. Moabites, you got the Chinese, the Hagrites, Gebelites, Ammonites, that's the Japanese, and Amalekites. And that's the modern Israel right now. That's uh, the, the small hats. All right. And they're represented in the U.N. So that lets you know right there that they're not the true Israel, because according to the, the law, it says that Israel will not be regarded or reckoned among the nations. So how are they a part of the U.N.? And, and they're in agreement with everything, this evil, wicked, twisted uh, agenda. And then the list, you know, some of the Hamites, people from Philistia and Tyre etc all right so going back to psalms 2 verse 3 it says in the end back in the end it says let us break their chains and throw off their shackles yeah, these nations they don't want to come up under the authority and rulership of uh yahweh why yahweh shy you know they're they're pushing for them themselves to rule and to throw off the day of the lord because they know what that spells when the Lord shows up. Chains and shackles, they're going into captivity. Like when King David, when he uh, sat on the throne, all these nations, they, they were subject. All right? they, were, they were under the rule of uh, David and the Israelites. All right, like real quick, let me go to, um, I think it's 1 Samuel 22. They don't want the throne of David again. So that's why they all are conspiring together even to this very day. Uh, 1 Samuel 22. And verse. Uh, let me jump down. Let me see. I think it might be Second Samuel. Yes, Second uh, Samuel twenty-two and verse. Here we go. Second Samuel 22. And starting at verse uh, 36, it says, Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness have made me great. This is King David. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them. And that's what Yahweh Shai is ultimately going to do when he returns. He's going to come back and he's going to put his enemies under his feet. And make the earth his foot, uh, make his slacky. He's gonna um, basically make his enemies his footstool. All right. Let me get a uh, real quick. Let's get Psalms uh, one ten.
Psalms 110 and verse 5. And it says, The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through the kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound their heads over many countries. So he's coming down to take down all your all the leaders, all these uh, world rulers. Okay? That's why it talks about in Revelation how he's going to uh, judge and make war. Revelation 19 and 11. So going back, it says, and I have uh, verse 39, 2 Samuel 22. And I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yeah, they are fallen under my feet. But thou hast girded me with strength to battle. All right. And Yahweh Shai, that's what he's coming back to do. Because he's going to sit on the throne of David. All right. Psalms 110 and 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right. And the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. So, King David was just a, a, a prelude to that. Okay? It says, uh, And I have consumed them and wounded them, that they could not arise, yet they are fallen under my feet. But thou hast girded me with strength to battle, them that rose up against me hast thou subdued under me. Thou hast given me the necks of thine enemies, like of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire of the streets, and did spread them abroad. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. Thou hast kept me to be the head of the heathen. So he's the ruler over the heathen. A people which I knew not shall serve me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. And David received all this in his reign. Yahweh Shah is going to receive this in his reign, which is going to be forever. All right. So that's why when you read further down in this chapter, Psalms 2, and it's still in the NIV, they're saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. Now, we're not going to submit and come up under their control. No, the Lord's going to rule. He's going to come back and he's going to rule them. And the Israelites, the elect, are going to rule over them as well. Because the elect are going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. So this is going to, that's the real world order that the Lord is going to establish. The real governing body, the elect, 144,000. It says, the one enthroned in heaven laughs, talking about the Lord. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord scoffs at them. Yeah, you know, these these are general, these um summits and, and, and meetings that they've been having, these remarks and the, the World Economic Forums and all these different things that they're having. The Lord is laughing at it. Like, y'all really think y'all gonna I'm gonna allow y'all to just fulfill that and that's gonna be it? No, man. The Lord's gonna all he's gonna he's gonna offset them. All right, Job 5 and uh, 12. He's going di to disappoint the devices of the crafty that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. You know? And, you know, one of the ways that he's going to slow them down is because he's going to continue to increase those plagues to the point where they're going to be weary in the multitude of their uh, councils. Because that's what it's all about, you know? Uh, Psalm 64. Psalm 64 and 1. And it says, Hear my voice, O power, and my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. This is their, their conspiracy. All right? Who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. You know, they coming up with ways to try to silence the prophets, the men of the Lord. You know, they calling us uh, extremists and you know, potential terrorists and hate groups and this and that. You know. 
to try to suppress the word going out, but you can't do nothing against the truth. It says, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privately. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them in the heart is deep. All right. You read that in the. I'll read it in the NLT. And it says. They encourage each other to do evil and plan how to set their traps in secret. Who will ever notice? They ask. As they plot their crimes, they say we have devised the perfect plan. Agenda 2030 is the perfect plan, right? Yes, the human heart and mind are cunning, okay? It says, but the Mosai himself will shoot them with his arrows and suddenly strike them down. That's why the Lord is in the heavens laughing at them. They don't know what the Lord's getting ready to do. So back in uh, Psalms 2, in verse 5, it says, he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain, All right, which is Yahushai. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today I became your become your father. All right. Talking about his begotten son. Right. I ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth, your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery therefore you kings be wise be warned your rulers of the earth there's a warning to uh all these nations man that that, that are represented in the un the, the 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 top leaders all these puppets for the uh the international bankers all right this is a headline for you from the lord because you're not going to control the show and you're not going to continue to rule over this world and, and continue to um, desecrate it in the fashion that you have. With all this uh, technology, all the genetic splicing and, and you know, all the stuff that they're doing, man, coming up with all these crazy inventions, con continuing to uh, deteriorate the, the earth. So the Lord gonna end up stopping you, you devils in your tracks, man. So let's go from there to the apocrypha. Let's go to uh, Sirach, the thirty-sixth chapter. And this is uh, Sirach 36 and verse, uh, verse 1, it says, Have mercy upon us, O Lord, power of all, God of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations, and let them see thy power. And they're going to see it. Trust, trust. The Lord's going to definitely show it. It says, And thou was sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us and let them know thee as we have known thee that there is no God but thou, O Yahweh. Shew new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm like the Lord had to, had to do um, in, in ancient Egypt before Pharaoh. The Lord revealed his right arm, his, his, his hand, and it was very glorious, man, and it was fearful. All right, them Egyptians, they, they, they were brought down to earth. It says that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Rise up and raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Sake the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escape it be consumed by the rage of the fire and let them perish that oppress the people. Because this whole agenda is really to oppress the, the, the world. Is straight up global tyranny what they're trying to do. It says, smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we. You know, and that's, hey, you know, that's what he's going to end up doing. 
Because they're trying to establish themselves like their God on earth, mainly Esau. He's the one that's saying, I am and none else because I got the technology to prove it. So, yeah, man, you know, that's why, like it says in Revelation 12, you know, the devil's coming down with great wrath because he knew of that he had but a short time and the Lord got his number. This is why they want to accelerate. Like you see this term here, acceleration towards the sustainable development goal. So they, they want to move fast. So they want to, they're going to implement more, uh, uh, you know, crisis to, to further justify their uh, lockdowns and more extreme tyrannical measures, you know, to, to, to enforce these goals. All right. And, um, I'm going to play this uh, little clip here. This is from a woman uh, named Rosa uh, Kaur. And she was given a breakdown and warning about this whole agenda. And, uh, you know, years after she brought this out, she wind up dead, which I'm pretty sure they, they whacked her. But uh, that was writing it off as if it was just, a you know, a bunch of conspiracies. But we seeing it all being laid out before our eyes, so you can't really deny it. So let me uh, play it real quick, and uh, Lord willing, that will be in the end of the lesson. This is a plan that was agreed to by 179 nations. It's called the Agenda for the 21st Century. It's a totalitarian state to being developed right now all over the world. It is the inventory and control plan. Inventory and control of all land, all water, all minerals, all plants, all animals, all construction, all means of production, all food, all energy, all information, and all human beings in the world. And this she just laid it out, you know, those, and that's all the facets of, of of life on earth and this is basically Habakkuk the second chapter in a nutshell you know the, the desire is that is, is as death you know they're, they're matter of fact let me get it Habakkuk 2 and uh 5 And it says, yeah, also because he transgressed by wine, he's a proud man, needs to keep a fat home, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death. and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heap up unto him all people. And that's what this whole one world agenda is all about. Okay. This is why he have a, U, a, a United Nations spearheaded by babylon the great whore ruled by the edomites this is a plan that was agreed to by 179 nations back in 1992 it's a united nations plan it's called the agenda for the 21st century and so many of us around the world think that um well, sustainable development, it just sounds so great. Isn't it about recycling and creative reuse and, uh, and creating energy and food resources for everyone? And the answer is no, it really is not. It's about moving populations into city centers, concentrated city centers, and clearing them out of the rural areas. And that's exactly what you see happening. All this immigration, so that they can actually spy and see who you know they, they they need to have everybody in big populous areas, so that they can have their eye upon them. Okay, they they can monitor them, you know, put 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 his mark upon them. All right, so that they can be tracked and and and, and uh traced, controlled. Is why they were that's why they've been destroying these different rural areas 
with all these uh the train derailments and uh you know air pollutions and you know toxic chemical spills and it's all an attempt to push people into these concentrated uh cities man and they're going to turn all these major cities into what you call 15 minute smart cities is what they did to Hawaii Maui cuz that was the, the the purpose move all get all them people out of there if they don't get out of there then we going to get them up out of there and he caused fire to come down from heaven to <laughs> to do that Yeah, this devil, he's 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 on right. He's on a run right now, man. And Satan is 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 a hundred percent backing him. All right. They 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 when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. All systems have to be brought into harmony in order to control them all. Because when systems don't meet, when they're when they're out of balance or not in sync with one another, they can't be controlled centrally. And the goal of Agenda 21 is one world government and total control from a central unit. Every nation that signed on to Agenda 21 has its uh, its local Agenda 21 plan. People in the United States are completely unaware of this. If I go out and talk about this, the United States press will attacks me and calls me, which is is totally ridiculous. It is a, but it's not a theory. It's a fact. The th yeah, you saw that the scriptures even calls it a conspiracy. Three pillars of United Nations Agenda 21 are economy, ecology, and equity, the three E's. And everyone sort of thinks that they know what that means, the idea of social equity. It must mean that, well, everyone's going to have access to clean water and clean air, and uh, no one's uh, property is going to be used as a dumping ground because they are at a poverty level. But really what social equity is about is about impoverishing huge portions of the population and bringing down uh, develop the developed nations. Everything that we're looking at now is destined to collapse our economies. It's a totalitarian state to being developed right now all over the world. And what major corporations want in this development is to be able to, uh, to have move, full movement of, of uh, of workers without borders or boundaries to be able to move their goods through without regulations and to reduce wages. And so this is the goal. So this is what you find with social equity. And of course, economy and uh, ecology is about, these are the three circles, economy, ecology, and social equity. And where they meet in the center is balance. But really that balance is a communitarian balance. So it's not balance of well-being of the people. What it is is it's a balance for corporations so that they can exploit and control and have populations in an area, in tightly packed, dense areas, so that they can be surveilled and managed. And this is what that balance looks like as far as the development of a totalitarian state is. Then we get uh, Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13 and 11, it says, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And uh, you look up that word terrible. The word is a uh, arayatiza, arayatiza, and it says awe-inspiring, terror-striking, terrifying, ruthless, mighty down here, powerful or tyrannical, mighty oppressor. All right, basically somebody that's a uh, tyrannical. Like a tyrant. Okay? And that's what these devils are. They're tyrants, man. So when the Lord returns, this is what he promises to do. He's going to punish the, the, the world for their evil 
and the wicked for their iniquity. This is all iniquity. You know, because it's all about what? Control. Mainly the, the globalist elite, they want that kind of control. So, yeah, man, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to cut it right there. And uh, Lord willing, Yahweh edified. I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Shai. And to the next lesson, Shalom.